Welcome to another amazing day. The river's still a uh, bit overflowed, so we're here in this gazebo and public park again. But we're still close to the river. And we still have our trees and our nature, which is uh, behind me. I hope that you're doing wonderful today. A quick visual descriptor, I have long brown hair, glasses, a brown shirt, uh, bracelets, coffee in hand. Mm. As I said, I'm here in this gazebo in a public park space near the river, trees behind me. This gazebo has been here a pretty long time, actually. Uh, I remember being a kid here in, in this area, little kid. I remember the gazebo, so it's been here a long time. But stuff like that's just fun. <clears throat> I hope you have your coffee, tea, whatever it may be, whatever gets your day going, whatever makes your day excellent. I have my coffee. You know, it's just a bit of comfort and joy here. <laughs> Morning over there on Twitch. Glad to have you here. Get yourself a cup of your comfort. And this uh, stream is powered by Restream. Uh, so I'm coming to you right now on LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Absolutely wonderful software. So if you're looking to do some live streaming or you're already live streaming, consider using Restream. Its tools are really easy to use. They have lots of functionality. It's just awesome. Yep. Good morning over on Twitch. All right. So a little bit of a conversation today. Self-confidence and creativity. It's, well, it's something that really needs to go hand in hand. Self-confidence is useful for all sorts of things we do. It's useful for our health. It's useful for our view of ourselves, our, our life, our interactions with friends, family, our jobs. But self-confidence is also very important for our creativity. When our confidence dips, our creativity can dip, or sometimes our perception of our creativity and the art that we make and the passions that we follow, you know, they can lag, they can fall back slightly. But when it comes to creativity and confidence and the way we perceive ourselves, what we create, what we make, and, and what we do, it's going to get better. Now, the first thing I'm going to say to you right now, this is something that will actually build your self-confidence, build your confidence, and reinforce what you do. Celebrate small successes. Celebrate every success, but celebrate small successes. No matter what kind of art you're doing, uh, painting, writing, video work, <clears throat> whatever it might be, if you finish writing a page, if you get a painting done, if, if you finish a video, even if you still have to go back and edit things, even if you might have other things to do to that piece of art, celebrate that small success. Acknowledge that you've already achieved that thing, already gotten part of your mission for that project done. It's so important that we look at each phase and each big step of what we're doing as an accomplishment because you're making your way forward. Oftentimes, we might hold off any celebration until maybe after other people acknowledge what we're doing, but that can put you on a trajectory where you feel like you've only accomplished something when someone else acknowledges it. That in itself is not going to help your confidence and your creativity. Now, don't get me wrong. When other people acknowledge the work we do, it's amazing. 
and it definitely is fulfilling. But we have to be the first person to acknowledge our work and, it, and acknowledge all the hard work we're doing. So celebrate your successes, each one. If you're writing a poem, celebrate getting your rough draft done. If you're writing an article, celebrate uh, finishing the research phase right before you get writing. If you're making a video, as soon as you have your raw footage done, celebrate that small success. Acknowledge that you've already got that much done. <clears throat> now, additionally, don't just celebrate successes. Take notes as you go along. As you move forward in your creativity, in your art, take notes. Write down inventories of what you are doing, what you're learning, and what you're going to do. Taking notes about your process is going to really reinforce how much work goes into what you do. And the more you're acknowledging how much work goes into what you do, the more you're going to see all the value in what you do. And the more value you see, the more you can believe in what you do. We can be really passionate about our arts. We can be really invested in our craft and in our creativity, in our entrepreneurship, in all the different avenues of our desire and what we want to be. Remind yourself of all the hard work you're doing. Take notes. Keep scribbles and jots. Journals or voice notes. Any sort of inventory, any sort of process that you can write down so that you can reference back to everything that went into what you're doing going to show you how valuable what you're doing is. All these little things build up to your final product, what you're building towards, what you're moving to. Now, this next one doesn't always feel so good, but open yourself up to critique and criticism. One of the things that more often than not, can hamper our self-confidence are when people criticize what we do. Critique it. Pick it apart. But there's a lot to be gained here, and there's actually a lot of value in criticism. If people can find things to look at within your work that can be improved upon, you see ways that you can improve for your next project and you can also see how much of what you've done is already wonderful. Criticism, critique, review, a second set of eyes, other people coming in and seeing what we're making and doing, it can reinforce our confidence. It can show us our skills. And anytime that we're able to see what our skills are, or receive some amount of validation, or also learn and grow for, for the future. This is showing us our path forward. And you most certainly can't keep yourself from seeing the road forward. Criticism is going to come in our lives, regardless of whether we want it. It's all about how you take that criticism, what you do with it, and how you allow it to affect you. There will be bad days where criticisms hit you hard, hit you where you live, but there's still something to be learned from it. And in that learning, you'll get better. And then if you still celebrate successes as you go along, take notes about the process of learning about how to do those new things or what you've changed or what you can change, again, it's going to reinforce your belief in yourself 
your confidence in yourself and what you're doing. And it goes without saying that you also need to take time away from your art. Whatever creative process you do, whatever craft you engage in, you need to step back from it. Every now and again, you need to set down your paintbrush, turn off your camera, close your computer, put down your instrument. <clears throat> we need to take time away from our craft, our creativity, so that we can absorb, decompress, unwind, breaks away from doing what we're passionate about is going to not only keep our passion fresh, but it's going to reduce the amount of time that perhaps we can think a little too hard about what we're doing. If you find yourself getting in cycles in your creative process where you're just doing the same thing again and again and again, stop, take a breath, and take a break. Time spent away, an hour, a day, a weekend, this is also going to improve your confidence in yourself because you're going to be taking pressure off yourself. At any point in time that your creative force, your, your passions and your projects become more than just something you love and they become something you obsess over or something that you just live within all the time, it's going to reduce how much you can see in regards to what you're doing. Take stress off yourself. Take burden off yourself. Take a break. This most certainly does improve your self-confidence, and it also improves what you do. You can't be on the clock all the time. So just to kind of go back for a second, let's make sure we're celebrating, taking notes, taking criticism, and taking breaks. Each and every one of these things is absolutely vital. And then the last big thing I'm going to say for the day is take risks. I'm sure there's something that you've considered doing that maybe you second-guessed yourself on. Uh, or maybe you're just worried about how it's going to be received. Take a risk. Each risk that we take, each new thing that we try, we're going to learn, develop, grow, become a more complete creator. It is also going to tremendously build your self-confidence. Because with these risks come rewards, the reward of a new experience, the reward of trying something different, or simply doing something that maybe you were afraid to do before, but you most certainly are capable of doing. Now, get yourself an extra cup of today, coffee, tea. Whatever it may be, whatever makes your day excellent, you're awesome out there. In fact, you deserve a couple extra cuppas of whatever makes your day better. Before I get going today, I would just like to talk to you about the Art of Feeling, an abstract expression art workshop. Uh, you can sign up on Eventbrite. Or you can actually visit my website. There's a page there that you can visit. You can sign up. But the art of feeling is open to all people, whether you've never painted before or whether you've been painting for years. We explore abstract art. We have open painting where I discuss techniques. We go through things. Everyone's going to get a chance to paint, to create, and to turn their feelings, their sensations, their emotions, everything going on inside them into a piece of unique art 
that's representative of you and what you're feeling at the time. Now, normally I'll also include a little bit of art history and some time talking. We go through some exercises in regards to our feelings. It's a whole lot of fun. Everyone can benefit. Now, of course, if you join, uh, you don't necessarily have to join by video or turn on your microphone or everything or anything like that. Uh, you can participate in that way as little or as much as you want. And any art supplies are great. Just need something to paint with, something to paint on, and some paint. So just, you know, whatever you have that you can bring, that's awesome. It's all done virtually, so you can stay in the comfort of your own home, work on art with a group of great people, and get something new. Learn new skills. Uh, if you've ever wanted to try art, this is a great way to begin. There are some recommended supplies on the listing on Eventbrite. And there's also a link to my Amazon storefront where you can pick up some budget supplies. But again, anything, some brushes, some paper, some paint of any kind, perfectly fine. Do consider joining us. Uh, there's been a whole lot of fun for all of these. I believe the next one is going to be on the 18th of June. I'll double check that date. And I'll put it uh, in comments on my YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter later. But I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. And also, it's Pride Month. So happy Pride, everyone. Enjoy the month. Enjoy your day. Uh, enjoy life. Be excellent. Stay awesome. And I'm so glad you all joined me again. I'll see you all again really soon. But until then... Bye, everybody. Bye.